Hello students, in this video we'll find the moment generating function of a random variable that follows a gamma distribution. So if x follows a gamma distribution with parameters alpha and theta, this implies then the PDF of x has the form f of x, and it depends on alpha and theta, will be x to the alpha minus 1 e to the negative x over theta over theta to the alpha and then gamma of alpha for x greater than 0. So these are gamma distributions. Gamma distributions include a special case when alpha is equal to 1, you have an exponential distribution. So gamma 1 theta is an exponential distribution. Okay? I'd like to find the moment generating function of these random variables. Now to do that, we have to remember some properties of the gamma function. So let's recall that gamma of alpha is the integral from 0 to infinity of t to the alpha minus 1 e to the negative t dt. This is the gamma function. And it has a very special property, namely that the most important property of this is that gamma of alpha plus 1 is equal to alpha gamma of alpha, which follows by integrating by parts. So this mimics a factorial in a general sense. When alpha is equal to n plus 1, then gamma of an gamma of n plus 1, where n is a whole number, is going to be n factorial. So in some sense, this gamma function is a generalization of the factorial. Now, if I want to find the moment generating function, let's go about it. So we're going to compute the MGF of x. It's going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the tx. Then we'll have what? Then we'll have x to the alpha minus 1 over theta to the alpha. And then we'll have an e to the negative x over theta dx. And let's pull that gamma of alpha out in front of everything. So let's write it 1 over gamma of alpha out in front of our integral over there. Just pull it out. We might as well pull out the 1 over theta 2 because we're going to make a substitution now. So what we're going to do is we're going to write this as 1 over gamma of alpha theta to the alpha, the integral from 0 to infinity. Now we put all the exponents together. So I'm going to have an x to the alpha minus 1. And then we have an e to the what? e to the negative x. If I have e to the negative x, I'm going to have a 1 over theta, 1 over theta, minus t. Minus minus turns into a plus, dx. And now we're going to make a substitution. So the substitution we're going to make is the following. We're going to let u be this expression over here. So this whole expression over here is going to be my u. So then my du is going to be a dx times a 1 over theta minus t. And so we're in good shape now. So what I'm going to do is we'll basically think about this. We're going to incorporate some of these thetas back into the x's over here. Okay? So what will we have? So what's my u? That's my u right over there. So how can I relate u and x to each other? So what will x be in terms of u? So if u is equal to x times the quantity 1 over theta minus t, then that's going to say that x is going to be u over 1 minus 1 over theta minus t. So that will be what my x is in terms of u. Great. So now we do our substitution. We'll have a 1 over gamma of alpha, a theta to the alpha. My limits integration won't change. It'll go from 0 to infinity. Then we have an x, which is going to be u, u over 1 minus theta minus t. And all this is raised to the alpha minus 1. And then we'll have an e to the negative u, e to the negative u. And then we'll have a, uh, what will my du be? So my du is going to be, um, what's my dx going to be rather? My dx is going to be du over this quantity. So I'm going to have a du over the quantity 1 over theta minus t. Right? So just a little bit of algebra to do over here. So what we're going to notice is that if I take this theta to the alpha, I can distribute this theta to the alpha between this term over here and this term over here because I have a total of alpha minus 1 and a factor of 1 over here. So what I'll get is I'm going to get 1 over gamma of alpha the integral from 0 to infinity. Then I'm going to have a u to the alpha minus 1 over, I'll have a theta, just theta, theta times 1 over theta is just 1, so 1 minus theta t to the alpha minus 1. And then I'll have an e to the negative u, e to the negative u, and then a du 
Give us some space over here. du over 1 minus theta t. So all total, what we have, all total, we're going to have a pull of this 1 minus theta t to the alpha, because there's an alpha minus 1 and a 1 over here. So that's going to be 1 over 1 minus theta t to the power alpha. And of course, there's a restriction on how large this t can be, because obviously, if t is a little bit what? If t is a little bit bigger, then 1 over theta, this will be negative, and that will turn to a positive exponent, and the integral won't converge over here. So t should be less than 1 over theta. That should be a requirement of our problem over here, that t is less than 1 over theta. Good. And then we'll have what? Then we'll have times 1 over gamma alpha, the integral from 0 to infinity, of u to the alpha minus 1, e to the negative u, du. And if we look at this integral over here, we see that's exactly what gamma of alpha is. So this will cancel with this. And we'll just have that the moment generating function of a gamma random variable is 1 over theta times t to the power alpha, provided that t is less than 1 over theta. This result is very useful in a variety of different contexts. It's useful, the first context it's useful in is that if I sum up n independent exponential distributions with parameter theta, I will get a gamma distribution with parameters n and theta. And it also comes into play when we're studying chi-square distributions, because chi-square distributions follow a gamma distribution with a suitable choice of alpha and theta being 2, for example. Thank you very much.